Hi, I'm Blythe Nelson, and today we're going to talk about the nervous system. We're going to cover four key ideas about how the nervous system is organized. You'll then be able to identify the structures of the central and peripheral nervous systems and describe the functions of the somatic and autonomic nervous systems. We'll begin with part one, structural divisions, beginning with the central nervous system. One way to organize the nervous system is by anatomy. All of the structures found within the skull and the vertebral column comprise the central nervous system, or CNS for short. The CNS consists of the brain and the spinal cord. These two structures contain many kinds of glial cells and neurons organized in complex ways. Some CNS neurons have very long axons, extending out of the CNS and reaching all the way to the periphery of the body. Both the brain and spinal cord contain neuron cell bodies, axons, dendrites, and numerous neuroglia, or glial cells. The CNS networks process incoming information at many levels and coordinate all of the body's activities in order to maintain homeostasis and control bodily functions. All of the nervous system structures that are not inside the skull and vertebral column make up the peripheral nervous system, or PNS. The PNS connects the CNS to limbs and organs, the periphery, to control organs and physiological processes. Neurons whose cell bodies lie outside the CNS are grouped into small clusters of cell bodies called ganglia. These and all of the axons, dendrites, nerves, and sensory structures found outside the CNS are part of the PNS. The parts of CNS neurons that extend beyond the skull or vertebral column and out into the periphery of the body are considered to be part of the peripheral nervous system. So these cells cross the line between PNS and CNS and are part of both structural systems. Axons and dendrites of the PNS are housed inside special tubular structures called nerves, which may contain hundreds of different axons, carrying information in both directions along the path of the nerve. Part 2. Functional Divisions Another way to organize the nervous system is by function. Some axons carry signals from the CNS out to the periphery in order to control organs, muscles, or physiological processes. Since these signals control actions, we call them motor neurons. Motor signals travel from cell to cell along a motor pathway. Sensory organs send information from the periphery to the CNS via sensory neurons along sensory pathways. Motor, or outgoing signals, are also called efferent signals traveling along efferent pathways. Sensory or incoming signals are also called afferent signals, and they travel along afferent pathways. Part 3, the somatic and autonomic nervous systems. Some motor neurons are connected to skeletal muscles that are under voluntary control. You can decide whether or not to stand up, shake your head, or laugh. These motor neurons are called somatic motor neurons, and together they make up the somatic nervous system, or SNS. Other bodily functions, such as insulin secretion, stomach movement, or sweating, are not voluntary. Organs or functions that work without you thinking about them are controlled by the autonomic motor neurons. Together, these autonomic pathways make up the autonomic nervous system, or ANS. The ANS controls the most basic and important functions, such as heart rate, blood pressure, respiration, and body temperature. Autonomic control relies on sensory feedback from glands and organs throughout the body. Sensory, autonomic, and somatic pathways include both CNS and PNS structures, as they carry instructions between the CNS and peripheral structures. Part 4. Autonomic Divisions The ANS is divided into two divisions that are both structurally and functionally distinct. Sympathetic nerves exit the CNS in the cervical and thoracic regions. They stimulate fight or flight activities. The pupils, airways, and blood vessels that supply skeletal muscles dilate, heart rate and respiration increase, and digestive activities are put on hold. Sweat gland secretion also kicks up. Parasympathetic nerves exit from the CNS in the cranial and lumbar regions. They stimulate rest and digest activities. These include tissue repair, digestive, and urinary activities. Parasympathetic stimulation also decreases heart rate and blood pressure, and airways decrease in diameter. Here's a quick review of what we covered in this section. 1. 
The central nervous system is made up of the brain and spinal cord which process incoming information and coordinate the body's activities. 2. The peripheral nervous system is made up of the nervous system structures that are not inside the skull and vertebral column, including ganglia, axons, dendrites, nerves, and sensory structures. 3. Sensory and motor pathways carry signals to and from the CNS. 4. The somatic nervous system is made up of motor neurons connected to skeletal muscles that are under voluntary control. 5. The autonomic nervous system controls involuntary functions, such as heart rate, blood pressure, respiration, and the maintenance of body temperature. 6. Sympathetic nerves stimulate fight or flight activities. Parasympathetic nerves stimulate rest and digest activities. Most of the visuals I'm using here are from Visible Body's Anatomy and Physiology app. You can get it for your iPad, iPhone, Android, or computer. It's also available to schools through a site license.